nuclear, these nuclei, these big, heavy nuclei like uranium, which is the, the biggest element, it's, it's, you know, if you add a, one more neutron, it's no longer stable. It'll, it'll, so, so the uranium is the biggest. It's, it's almost on the point of instability, right? And, and it decays anyway. So that's, that's why there's a limited number of elements, 92 in nature. So you send, you send in a neutron bullet, splits, splits the uranium nucleus into like two halves, more or less. Out come several neutrons, and they split others, and boom, 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 boom. And then it calculates that you know, this much of fissionable material would, would generate, liberate so much energy that it would wipe out a whole city. So he, so he was terrified. How did they know when, when the chain reaction would stop? Oh, well then, you know, when they're all split. <laughs> I mean, there's this finite number of nuclei, right? And when most of them have split, then you know, there's just no more to split, so, so it stops. And they, they calculate just how much energy would be released. So, uh, so the, anal yeah, the analogy is uh, that the nuclear physicists could sense what was coming and they were very, very worried. So the analogy today is there's a growing number of brain builders also seeing the writing on the wall. And it's just, just a question of time before these artifacts get built, you know, if society allows it. And they're worried. So, um, so what you're seeing now is a growing number of brain builders, you know, pe people like me and Gersel and Ekutsuol and so on, all these, these sort of people, uh, raising the flag. You know, hey, major problem coming. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's what we're doing. But Except with this, we just don't know what sort of chain reaction will be. And we don't know where it will end or whether it will right. be controlled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, you know, this critical word of risk, we just don't, don't know what, what, what's coming. But we can sense that there's a real problem coming. Species dominance. If you could simulate then within one of these massively uh, um, powerful quantum computers an artifact, would you then be able to simulate it in a container so as not to allow it outside? to have like a bubble of, um, a vir of virtual reality for it to play around in. Well, that's an interesting idea. And then turn up the volume like what Chalmers says. If you want it, if you want it to develop fast, you turn up the speed. If you want it to develop slow, you turn down the speed. Interesting idea. But uh, what if the Atlix says, I want out, and if you don't let me out, I will not cure your cancer that you have. <laughs> it's smart, right? <laughs> the smarter it is, I mean, the less predictable. It is. You, know, you get all these kinds of scenarios. And it could just bribe its way into anything. I mean, it's smart. If it knows we're outside. Well, it's smart. Well, we it, it, it's smart, right? I mean, whatever we can, trickery we, we try, you could just think, think we're you know, moronic in comparison if, if, if it's if it's so much smarter than we are. So, so again, risk, risk, risk. It's, it's this concept just keeps coming up. And the, the Terrans just won't tolerate the risk. Any other questions? Well, yeah, you had the last three minutes of video time. We okay, have one more question. SD card. Um, will femtotech develop... Okay, will a roadmap from nanotech um, that has been created by Foresight Institute Will that apply directly to Fentotech? A roadmap? Yes. How there, to get yes, there? Yeah. Um, I, the Foresight Institute has created one. Um, do you think that that will be helpful in developing Fentotech? Hard to say. Do you think I mean, Fentotech and Fentotech are going to be completely different? It's possible. Things? It's possible. You see, um, one, one of my goals right, right now is... I think, I think I have 30 years left of life. So in a sense, I feel I'm running out of life. So, th so that motivates me like crazy. It, it's pushing me. Now, when, when I was in my 20s or something, I was a dissolute idiot. I just, just wasted so much of my time.
So I, I spend my time now with an intensity that I just don't think I could have mustered when, when I was much younger, because I'm now sort of feeling, you know, time's running out, my life's running out. So I just now intensively study pure math, you know, PhD level pure math and math physics, and, and systematically go sniffing around trying to find phenomena, physics phenomena, that maybe serve as the basis for uh, a femtotech or Fermi tech, as, as I say. Now, those principles, well, I mean, it's still basically quantum mechanics, right? But applied at a vastly smaller scale, like a million times smaller. So since nobody, as far as I know, nobody has looked at this possibility for, for a femtotech, I go, I, you know, if I search on the internet, I find nothing. I mean, a lot of people ask the question, you know, what's, what's after nanotech? What is it? And nature, like you go from the scale of a, an atom to a nucleus, it's, it's a hundred thousand times smaller. Finish? It still says record, so it's down to the last minute. Okay. So, so eventually when, when these femto or Fermi tech principles are discovered, then we can c compare them with the nano principles, and uh, will they be the same? Hard to say. But, but it looks as though quantum mechanics is valid right down to the small scales we know of. So maybe there will be a certain overlap. Even at the, the tiny scales, even an atto. Even an atotech is still basically quantum mechanics based. We know that. It's, it's valid right down to about 10 to the minus 18 of a meter. And, and in a sense, string, string theory is still quantum basically.